Hello everyone. I'm Professor Lee of Dr. Wild Hub TV. Today, this is part two lecture of how to use the world's top 10 medicinal plant. In part one, I talk about three types of fruit such as harson, amna, and bergamot. And today, we will study four types of powerful plants which can lower your cholesterol naturally and safely. Please take a look and see which medicinal plant is right for you. Let's get started. The fourth plant. It has the same structure as the starting class of drug, the representative prescription drug. So, of course, it will be effective in treating hyperlipidemia, right? In addition, reduce the mortality rate of cardiovascular disease such as sudden death, improve atherosclerosis, and even has anti-diabetic effect. What's the name of this product? It is Redis Rice. What you see now is red rice that's been fermented by inoculating red yeast into white rice with epidermis removed. There are two types of fungi that produce rapid reducing substances. One, Aspergillus stereos. This is used to manufacture starins, a refrigerative prescription drug, and is not used in food manufacturing. Two, Monascus purpureus. This is the red yeast we will study today. It's a fungus used to produce red yeast rice by fermenting white rice. It's a fungus that produces monocolin K, which has the same structure and action as robustatin. This fungus is used to make health foods and supplement containing monocolin K. The experiment you are seeing now shows that red colored substances are produced 10 days after inoculation with red yeast. This is the red yeast fungus growing and the mycelium proliferating. It is characterized by a sweet taste and a unique fermented scent. And it is an important food ingredient in China. Let's look at the ingredient. 1. Monocolin K is the main active ingredient. This is a powerful component that inhibits cholesterol synthesis, which contributes to more than 70% of the amount of cholesterol synthesized in our body. It has a similar structure and action with lovastatin, a refrigerative prescription drug. I think it's a really unique component, right? 2. It contains sterols, monounsaturated fatty acid, and fiber components, which work together with monocolin K to inhibit lipid absorption in the small intestine and exhibit a complex lipid reducing effect. This feature is not found in lovastatin. The action mechanism 1. As just mentioned, inhibition of cholesterol synthesis 2. Moves bad cholesterol and little cholesterol into liver cells so lowering cholesterol levels in the blood 3. Inhibiting lipid absorption in the small intestine. 4. Genetic regulation of lipid metabolism. 5. It has the effect of restoring the functions of endothelial cells and making blood vessels healthy. In this way, the advantage of red yeast rice is that it plays the same role as lobostatin, but at the same time has other effects that lobostatin does not have. How much of a lipid lowering effect it has in the clinical studies published so far. To date, about 35 studies have been published. A total of 8,000 patients were targeted with ages ranging from 35 to 78. The daily dose based on monocolin K is 2 mg to 24 mg. On average, the dose is about 10 mg per day. This amount is 200 mg to 4,800 mg based on red yeast rice. The duration of taking was 4 to 48 weeks. Some studies conducted a very long term, 4 to 4.5 years. I'm going to show you the summary of results. 
the reduction rate of lipid was a 13.32 to 18.36 in total cholesterol, and LDL cholesterol, the most important bad cholesterol, it was reduced from as low as 7.56 to as high as 28.94. Triglyceride was also decreased by about 8.1 to 23.36, and HDL cholesterol, which is good cholesterol, increased by about 2.5. Other studies show that when radish rice was used together with a Mediterranean diet in type 2 diabetic patients who cannot take starting drugs due to severe side effects, LDL cholesterol decreased the number was reduced by 21%. These studies suggest that radish rice may be an important alternative treatment for patients who experience severe side effects of starting drugs. For 36 patients with cardiovascular risk factors, randomized control studies using combination agent is together with 10 mg of radish rice monocholine K plus Bifidus lactic acid bacteria, niacin, and coenzyme Q for 12 weeks, total cholesterol decreased by 16.7%, and LDL cholesterol decreased by 25.7%. What about scent and taste? Are you all curious? Since it is fermented, it has a somewhat pungent fermented scent, like aged cheese or beans. Of course, Depending on the strength of fungus used for fermentation, it may have a sweet flavor. The taste has a savory meat-like flavor, which is the main characteristics of fermented food. It also has a slightly mild sweet taste, and in some products, it also has a slightly salty taste. Of course, depending on the fermentation process and fermentation period, the tangy or sour taste may be stronger. I'll tell you about a case where it is good to use radish rice in patients with hyperlipidemia. Please see if this applies to you. First of all, you should know that the content of monocholine K varies depending on the fermentation process of the manufacturing company. Cases in which radish rice is important, one, if you have hyperlipidemia that requires strict treatment, you must take prescription drug so you should not use radish rice instead. However, it is good to use if the side effects of prescription drugs are severe. 2. In hyperlipidemia that only requires lifestyle modification, if you want to improve hyperlipidemia more actively, in this case, using radish rice will be effective. 3. As I mentioned, if you are being treated with starting drugs, and need to increase the dose but cannot increase it due to side effect, using a low dose of starin that does not cause side effect and using radish rice additionally will have a synergistic effect. From now on, I'll tell you how to take it. The easiest way is to purchase capsules or tablets. When purchasing a product, you must purchase a product with active ingredient monocholine K content clearly labeled. Take the recommended dosage, but the rule is to start with the smallest amount. If you look at the product, the general recommended intake of monocholine K per day is 4 to 8 mg. It is very safe and good to start with the lowest dose of 2 mg. If you look at the content label on the product label, you should check the monocholine K mg is indicated. There are also quite a few combination products such as coenzyme Q, and these products are also very good. This is how to take it as tea. Add about 0.5 to 1 teaspoon of the powder to 250 cc of boiling water and let it for about 10 minutes before taking it. Drink it all at once or in multiple doses about 2 to 3 times a day about 15 minutes before or after meal. You purchase the powder that is monocholine K content is clearly indicated and start with the recommended amount. Reddish rice can be used to make cooked rice.
this is a very good advantage in a country where rice is the main meal. It's better if the color is slightly red rather than reddish brown. Depending on the fermentation process, the content of monocolon K varies from product to product, so you can always purchase rice from the same manufacturers and always make rice with the same dosage. The recommended daily intake of monocolon K is 4 to 8 mg, and with reddish rice, is about 20 to 30 grams. You can make rice with white rice in a ratio of about 10 to 1. Start with as little as possible and wash the white rice, but do not wash the reddish rice and just add it to the washed white rice before cook. This is because washing reddish rice may result in loss of its active component. Let me tell you about the traditional decoction tea. Add about 1 to 5 grams of reddish rice per day to 1 liter of water. At the beginning, add 1 to 2 grams and decoct for about 100 minutes. Then drink 2 to 3 times as tea before or after meals. The amount of active components extracted varies depending on the types of reddish rice product or decoction time. So, always purchase products from the same company, therefore the decoction time should be constant. Start with the 1 to 2 grams and adjust as you check for the changes. In traditional medicine, there are records of its use for digestive disorders, abdominal pain, diarrhea, and chest pain, bruise, and for blood circulation. Look at the side effect and how to deal with them. So far, in 53 clinical studies, for about 8,535 people, no cases of serious side effect, so it is generally safe. However, because it has the same action and structure as starting drugs, you need to be more careful about side effects than other medicinal plants. 1. If you experience hot burn, nausea, abdominal pain, or diarrhea, there is no problem if you start with a small amount after stopping for 2-3 to three days. 2. Overdosing may cause dizziness. In this case, you can also stop for 2-3 to three days and restart with a small amount. 3. Muscle pain, muscle weakness, and liver dysfunction which are the most important side effects of starting drugs, it can also occur with reddish rice. Of course, they occur much less than with starting drugs. If this symptom occurs, you should stop taking the drug and start again with a smaller dose. It is also recommended to check liver function after one month. 4. If allergy symptoms appear, stop and go to the hospital if they seem to worsen. Now, this is a precautions. One, it's best to avoid if you are pregnant or breastfeeding. Two, it's good to have your liver function test regularly. In particular, if you already have liver disease or muscle problems, it's recommended that you consult your doctor in advance. Three, if you experience muscle pain, muscle weakness, fatigue, or digestive problems, be sure to inform your doctor. 4. Do not take reddish rice product while starting starting drugs. This is the principle. 5. Lastly, among the substances that play an important role in cellular energy metabolism and how it helps, the most well-known is coenzyme Q. However, since reddish rice can interfere with the synthesis of coenzyme Q10, it's recommended to consume food rich in coenzyme Q. For example, nuts, whole grains, legumes, spinach, broccoli, etc. And this is why there are complex products such as coenzyme Q among reddish products. I'd like to add one more thing. During the process of culturing reddish, a component called citrine may be produced. This component can cause kidney failure and cell damage. The Ministry of Food and Drug Safety set 
safety standard for the citrine component of radish rice product. So, if it is a health functional food certified by the Ministry of Food and Drug Safety, it can be consumed safely as it has passed the citrine standard. Lastly, let's look at other effects proven in controlled clinical studies. One, it reduced the occurrence of cardiovascular risk such as sudden death and reduced the mortality rate from cardiovascular disease. Two, the mortality rate of patients with coronary artery disease was reduced and carotid artery atherosclerosis index were also improved. Three, diabetes was also improved. Four, there are reports that various inflammatory index in the body have improved. Well, since you've studied radius right so far, do you think it'll be good for you? Unlike other medicinal plants, Lattice rice is a natural product that has the same component as the therapeutic agent, so it is an important natural food therapy method that will definitely improve hyperlipidemia if used well. It is the fifth plant. It's the leaf of a small evergreen tree, and it is the plant that is the center of the world's tea industry. In addition to its effect in treating hyperlipidemia, so many clinical effects have been reported. Reduced occurrence of diabetes, high blood pressure, cerebrovascular and cardiovascular disease, act as an anti-obesity, nerve cell protector, reduce the risk of liver cancer and improve liver function. It really has a lot of different effects. What's the name of this plant? This is the green tea tree that you all know so well. The photo you see now is of the green tea tree flower. It's a very fragrant white flower with abundant yellow stamens. It's widely cultivated in many places around the world. In the wild, it grows up to 9 meters tall, but when cultivated, it's cultivated as a short tree because it's continuously pruned. Then, these leaves are picked and processed. A variety of teas are manufactured depending on the country of origin and processing method. The main active component characteristic of green tea leaves is 70% of the polyphenol contained in the leaves are flavonoid. Among them, catechin is a well-known component and f gallocatechin 3 gallate a derivative of catechin, is the main active component. Let's talk about many different mechanisms for treating hyperlipidemia of green tea. One, by increasing LDL receptor activity, LDL cholesterol in the blood enters the cells, thereby reducing the level in the blood. Two, it binds to cholesterol in the small intestine and prevents cholesterol from being absorbed. Three, it burns fat and decomposes it. Four, it increases bile production by strengthening the gene expression of bile production enzymes. 5. It activates the synthesis of HDL cholesterol. 6. LDL cholesterol is fissured when oxidized, turns into much more worse cholesterol and causes arteriosclerosis of blood vessels. Green tea has the effect of suppressing LDL cholesterol from being oxidized. 7. Lastly, green tea has the effect of increasing heat generation, suppressing appetite, and has anti obesity effect. So, these things work collectively to reduce cholesterol. I'm going to show you so many scientific data behind. A total of 55 studies have been published so far, in which 4,874 patients aged 18 to 68. The duration of taking 4 to 2, 48 weeks. They took green tea as a various method. 1. 60 mg to 3000 mg of green tea extract per day, or 2. 300 mg to 800 mg of EGCG, a catechin derivative mentioned in the active component, epigallocatechin 3 gallate, 
abbreviated as EGCG, or 3. The caffeinated green tea extract. After taking 400 to 1,500 mg per day for 2 to 48 weeks, the rate of cholesterol reduction showed a great reduction in effect, especially when taking less than 1,000 mg per day or taking it for more than 12 weeks based on the green tea extract dosage. In other words, it is recommended to take green tea for more than 12 weeks and there is no need to consume more than 1,000 mg per day. Total cholesterol decreased by about 7.6, LDL cholesterol decreased by about 5.8, and HDL cholesterol increased by about 1.85. In other study, there were 15 studies targeting overweight or obese women. Here, the cholesterol reduction rate was 4.45 for total cholesterol, 4.49 for LDL cholesterol, and 24.45 for triglyceride, reducing all bad cholesterol. And HDL, the good cholesterol, increased by about 2.63. I think it's definitely effective. Everyone knows the scent and taste of green tea leaves, but there are many different types of tea and the taste and scent are very different depending on the place of origin and processing method. The scent is glassy, smells like seaweed or steamed vegetable, and has a floral scent, and can be savory or sweet. It tastes like fresh glass, savory and slightly astringent. If it is steeped or boiled for too long, it may taste bitter. In addition, it is characterized by sweet and savory taste. From now on, I'm going to tell you how to take it. Most people take it as tea, but you can also take it in capsules or tablets. Search on the internet to purchase tablets and take the recommended amount. Start with the smallest amount. There are several types of capsule. Some are made from green tea extract or some are made from decaffeinated green tea extract and some are made only from catechin component. Therefore, when purchasing, you should check what component the product is made of. In clinical studies, the recommended amount is less than 1,000 mg per day based on capsules made of green tea extract. There are a variety of ways to consume tea such as green tea, black tea, white tea, and oolong tea, depending on the processing method. You can choose according to your preference. Add 1 to 2 teaspoons of dried leaves or powder to 250 cc of boiling water after 5 to 10 minutes and drink it like tea. You can drink it all at once or in divided doses about 15 minutes after meal. Depending on your preference, there are a variety of special green tea brands and products with a sweet or savory taste made with additional components such as herbs, spices or fruit, so you can choose according to your preference. Traditional medicinal decoction tea is unnecessary. Even if you drink dried leaf tea, almost all of the active components are extracted. Therefore, there is no need to boil for a long time using traditional method. Green tea has been used in traditional medicine for purposes such as diuresis, hemostasis, heart disease, promoting digestion, regulating body temperature, and mental health. Let's talk about side effects and how to deal with them. The most well-known are caffeine-related symptoms. If you drink large amount or sensitive to caffeine, you may experience insomnia, nervousness, heart palpitations, and increased heart rate. In this case, you can stop for about 2-3 to three days and then start again with a small amount. Secondly, gastrointestinal symptoms can cause stomach upset if you take it on an empty stomach or drink a large amount and you may also have diarrhea. At this time, stop for 2-3 to three days and start again with a small amount. 
Three, if the allergy symptoms appear, stop and go to the hospital if it is severe. Four, there are well reportable liver dysfunction. So, if you have liver disease and are taking green tea for a long time, it's recommended to check your liver function. Five, there is the problem of decreased calcium absorption. If taking in excessive dose for a long time, calcium absorption may be inhibited. Let's talk about precautions. If you are sensitive to caffeine or suffer from anxiety, insomnia, or palpitations, you can use the caffeinated green tea. If you are taking anticoagulant, antipoietret drugs, or cardiovascular related drugs, consult your doctor because green tea may affect the metabolism of these drugs. Third, it may affect the absorption of iron contained in plant food, so if you have anemia, take it on an empty stomach. First, if you feel symptoms of stomach irritation, it's best to avoid it on an empty stomach. If you are pregnant, use the caffeinated green tea and do not take it for a long time. But drink it in a small amount a few times is not a big problem. Lastly, let's look at other effects proven in clinical studies. I mentioned at the beginning, green tea has been reported to have many different clinical effects. One, improve diabetes, reduce resting blood sugar and HbA1c levels. Two, has the effect of reducing diastolic blood pressure in hypertension. Three, reduce the risk of cerebral vascular disease and cardiovascular disease, and four, protect nerve cells and has antidepressant effect, five, it has anti-obesity effect, six, it reduces the risk of liver cancer and improves liver functions, seven, it has an anti-aging effect on the skin, eight, it is effective in reducing dental plaque by suppressing harmful bacteria in the oral cavity. It's been reported to be effective in reducing diarrhea that occurs when radiation treatment is used as chemotherapy. Green tea was popular at one time. Many people drink it for their health. But these days, people drink a lot of more coffee than green tea. I think the reason is that you have forgotten the incredible benefit of green tea. Green tea has many diverse and reliable effects, but I think we neglect the value of green tea too much. So, when you drink several cups of coffee a day, it would be great to have a cup of green tea instead of coffee at least once. It is the sixth plant of the Asteraceae family, native to the Mediterranean coast, and is a representative food ingredient in the Mediterranean diet. In addition to its effectiveness in treating hyperlipidemia, it is so effective in treating functional dyspepsia that it ranks among the top 10 in the world. In addition, it has the effect of improving diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity, fatty liver, and reducing harmful bacteria among the intestinal flora and increasing lactic acid bacteria, which are the representative of good bacteria. What's the name of this plant? It is artichoke. The scientific name is Chinaris colimus, and it is a perennial plant in the Chinara genus of the Asteraceae family. Flowers that resemble thistle flowers are very beautiful because it's a refrigerative ingredient of the Mediterranean diet is cultivated a lot. As you see, flowers are in full bloom in the artichoke field. The root, flower stalks, leaves, and calyxes all have medicinal uses. It's an edible plant that has been used since ancient Greece, Rome, and Egypt. The main edible part is the soft part below the inner calyx before the flower blooms. The main active component is cyanurin. This is a natural polyphenol complex that has the effect of inhibiting cholesterol synthesis. In addition to cyanurin, ingredients such as lutein and chorogenic acid are also important components. Let's talk about the action mechanisms for treating hyperlipidemia. One, 
inhibiting cholesterol synthesis. This is because cholesterol synthesis is suppressed by the combined action of cyanurin and chlorogenic acid. Two, it activates the LDL receptors of the liver cell to allow cholesterol in the blood to enter the liver cell. Three, it increases the production of bile acid. Four, it increases the excretion of cholesterol through feces. As a result, the elevated bad cholesterol in the blood is reduced. According to a paper that reviewed 131 papers on medicinal plants that reported the effects on improving hyperlipidemia by 2022, four plants were mentioned as having the best improvement effect. Bergamot, which I introduced in the part one lecture, and radish rice, which I talk about first in today's lecture and artichoke, which I'm talking about now, and then berberine, which I'm going to introduce. The above four medicinal plants can be said to be the medicinal plants with the highest probability of improving hyperlipidemia among the top 10. Let's take a look at the actual results of clinical research on artichoke. 14 papers were published, and the daily dose of artichoke extract was 500 mg to 3 grams, and the result after taking it for 4 to 8 weeks shows that the patient group who took artichoke extract had a 3 to 4 times lower cholesterol level than the control group who did not take it. Yes, it really definitely works. The reduction rate, LDL cholesterol 1.7 to as much as 49, total cholesterol decreased by 12 to 55, and triglyceride also decreased by 3.34 to 9.2. There are conflicting results about HDL cholesterol. Some studies show an increase, and another study reported that it does not increase it. Therefore, more evidence is still needed. In some study of combination preparations, in cases where 600 mg of bergamot extract, uh, studied in the part 1 lecture, did not show an effect of improving hyperlipidemia. A very small amount of 100 mg of dried extract of artichoke leaves were added. As a result of adding, a synergistic effect was reported. For about the scent and taste of artichoke, one of the reasons why it's a favorite food among Europeans is because it's a vegetable with a very unique taste and scent. The scent includes a mild earthy scent, a glassy scent mixed with natural scent, and a slightly savory scent. When cooked, the scent and taste become stronger. When cooked, it's an attractive vegetable that has a savory taste when chewed, but also has a fresh herbal taste, a savory taste, and a soft meat-like texture. Let me tell you briefly about how to consume it as food. First now is a European vegetable store. Can you see the artichokes? This is the entire calyx before the flower blooms. Purchase this, wash it well, blanch it in boiling water, and cook it in various ways. Peel up the outer layer of calyx one by one to reveal the soft part on the inside. It is scraped with a spoon and used in a variety of dishes, such as sauce or, as you can see, salad, various dishes, and fried food. There are many capsules and tablets. The important thing is to check the amount of cyanurin, which is the important active component. You can start with a small amount among the recommended dose. The duration of taking should follow the product direction or expert advice, but most clinical studies show that it is recommended to take it for about one to three months. And and using it for a long time, it's good to follow expert advice. And in principle, when using it for a long time, it's best to take a break in between. For example, if you take for three months, you take a month up, and then you take three months again, and then take a month up. In this way, it's good to use it for a long time with a break in between doses. When taking powder tea, the daily dose is 1 to 2 grams. Add it to 250 cc of boiling water after 5 to 10 minutes and drink it 
twice a day before or after meal. When taking it as a traditional decoction tea, you can purchase the dried artichoke leaves and boil them in one liter of mineral water. The amount recommended by the German herb committee is 4 to 6 grams per day based on the weight of dried leaves. Add the minimum amount of 4 grams to 1 liter of water. Since it is a leaf, it does not need to be decocted for a long time. So, decocted for 15 to 30 minutes, it can be used like tea. In traditional European medicine, there are records of its use for a digestive problem, constipation, liver and gallbladder disease, etc. Let me tell you about side effect. If you have diarrhea, abdominal pain, stop taking it for 2 to 3 days and start again in small amount. If you have allergic symptoms, stop using it and be in the hospital if it gets worse. Third, there is the issue of drug interaction. If you are taking anticoagulant, antiparietal agent, or antihypertensive drugs, you should consult your doctor. Fourth, if you have biliary tract disease, artichoke increase by production, and has the effect of contracting the gallbladder, so you may experience stiffness pain under your right ribs. Therefore, if you have a biliary tract disease, it is recommended to consult your doctor before taking it. In the case of pregnant women, breastfeeding or children, it is recommended to avoid this product as there is not yet sufficient safety data. It's good to eat it occasionally as a food ingredient but it's better to avoid taking it long time to improve hyperlipidemia. Artichoke is a plant in the chrysanthemum genus. If you are allergic to plant in this genus, it's good to avoid it because there is a possibility of allergy. Artichoke are effective in treating diabetes and lowering blood pressure. It's good to check your blood sugar and blood pressure regularly. Lastly, the effects have been proven in controlled clinical studies. As I mentioned at the beginning, one, improvement of functional dyspepsia. In other words, if you chronically have difficulty digesting food after eating, feel pain in your stomach, or feel full, it is called functional dyspepsia. Artichoke is an important plant that is so effective that it is included in the top 10 in these cases. Two, it improves high blood pressure. When taken for about 12 weeks, systolic and diastolic blood pressure decrease by 2 to 3 degrees. It doesn't decrease much, but it has the effect of lowering blood pressure anyway. 3. If you take it for about 2 months for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, the amount of fat in the liver decrease and liver function improve in an ultrasound scan. Four. Diabetes improvement. After taking it for about 8 weeks, fasting blood sugar falls and insulin resistance improves. 5. anti obesity effect. A weight loss of approximately 0.6 to 2.4 kg and an improvement in body mass index are observed. 6. In the intestine, it reduces bad bacteria and increases the good bacteria, lactic acid bacteria. In Europe, many people eat it because it tastes good and has good medicinal properties. There are farms in Korea that produce this product because its taste and effectiveness are guaranteed through clinical research. Please search for farms in the internet, purchase them, and experience them as good ingredient. Artichoke is very good for those who have functional dyspepsia with hyperlipidemia. Now finally, it's a yellow crystalline powder extracted from medicinal plants and has a very bitter taste and is a natural product that's been used for medicinal purposes in traditional Chinese and Indian medicine for about 3,000 years. In addition to the effect of treating hyperlipidemia, it improves diabetes, obesity, fatty liver, and gout. What's the name of this plant extract? It is berberine. It's a crystalline powdered alkaloid extract from the root, tubers, stems, and bark of several medicinal plants. It's a very famous plant-based medicinal component. 
There are over 30 representative plant species containing Burberry. Among these, I'll tell you the top four. The one with the highest Burberry content is the Coptis kinensis, with its rhizome containing 51 to 96 mg per gram. The second is the rhizome of Coptis tira, which contains 73 to 91 mg. And the third is Hydratis canadensis, popularly known as Golden Seal. Its rhizome contains 17 mg and the root contains about 63 mg. The next is the Indian Burberry, Burberry's Asiatica. The root contains 25 to 59 mg. The bark contains 16 to 88 mg. For reference, European Burberry, that is, Burberry's Burberry's, contains about 8 to 19 mg of Burberry, which is less than that of Indian Burberry. Besides these top four, plants rich in Berberina, Cassinium fenestratum stem, Philodendron ambulancis bark, and Corydalis anasua tuba. You probably heard of Corydalis. It's a wild flower that blooms with light purple flowers in early spring, and I introduced it once in a spring video. These three plants also contain a lot of Berberin, but much less than the top four mentioned above. Now, let's look at the shape of the plant that belongs to the top four. This is the Indian Burberry, which is ranked fourth in terms of Burberry content. And this is the root. This root contains a lot of Burberry. This is the third ranked Hydratis canadensis, popularly known as Golden Seal. Its rhizome and root contain Burberry. Second in ranking is rhizome of Cortis tira, whose rhizome has the second highest Burberry content. Finally, the plant with the highest Burberry content is the rhizome of Cortis kinensis. What you see now is the above ground stem and leaf shape. And what you see now is the root shape. Since this does not grow naturally in Korea, most products from China are used. Good quality is large, thick, and yellow in cross-section. I will tell you about mechanisms of berberine in treating hyperlipidemia. The most characteristic one is the forced mechanism. Refrigerative prescription drug for hyperlipidemia includes starins, and there are other new drugs. The name of the new drug is PCSK9 inhibitor. Berberine has the same mechanism as this new drug. In other words, it activates the LDL receptor on the liver cells and causes cholesterol in the blood to move into the liver cell. Two, it prevents cholesterol from being oxidized and becoming very bad cholesterol. Three, it reduces cholesterol by increasing bile production. According to a one meta-analysis paper for 131 trials, on medicinal plants that have reported the effect on improving hyperlipidemia by 2022, among the numerous medicinal plants with the effect on improving hyperlipidemia, four have been reported with the highest effect on improving hyperlipidemia. One of them is berberine. The four are bergamot, red yeast rice, artichoke, and berberine. Three of these have already been mentioned in the lecture and we are currently studying berberine. Let's look at the actual clinical research results of berberine. Until last year, 41 papers were published over 4,838 patients who took 0.4 gram to 1.5 gram divided into 2 to 3 doses per day. The duration of taking is 4 to 24 weeks. Reduction rate total cholesterol decreased by 7 to 17, and LDL cholesterol decreased by 8 to 15, triglyceride decreased by 6 to 18, and HDL increased by 1 to 2. Berber has the disadvantages of a low absorption rate, so to compensate for this, 
There are several studies that show a synergistic effect when combined with silymarin, the active component of tissue. For about the scent of berberine, it has an earthy and woody scent. The taste is characterized by a strong bitterness. I will tell you about medicinal method. Since berberine is extracted from a plant, it's better to take it in capsules or tablets rather than using the whole plant. If you purchase tablets, you should check the berberine content. Then take it as recommended and start with a small amount. For example, if one tablet is 200 mg, it is recommended to take it 2 to 3 times a day before meals. The cholesterol reducing effect will be increased if berberine is combined with other medicinal plant such as bergamot or radish rice that has different action mechanisms. When taking prescription drug for hyperlipidemia, it is recommended to start by reducing the recommended amount of berberine by half. The products I am showing you now are silymarine combination products. This is also a recommended product. It's best to follow expert advice on the duration of use. In clinical studies, it is usually taken for about 1 to 3 months. Please follow up expert advice and if you're using it for a long time, it's recommended to take a break in between medications. Berberine has a low absorption rate and is quickly excreted from the liver and small intestine when taken. It also has a strong bitter taste, so it's better to take capsule or tablets rather than powder tea. Anyway, I also tell you how to take it as a tea. The daily dosage is 500 mg to 1500 mg, but you must use an electronic scale to measure it. And you can take it in 3 divided doses per day. Starting with the smallest amount, 500 mg, boil to 150cc of water and check that the powder is dissolved before taking it. Since it has a strong bitter taste, you can mix it with cinnamon to make it sweeter or you can mix it with lemon depending on your preference. At the same time, it's recommended to seek guidance from an expert. When making traditional decoction tea, you can use plants that contain a lot of berberine. The most suitable one is Coptis kinensis rhizome. You can buy it and decoct it and drink it as tea. Berberine does not dissolve well in water at room temperature, but dissolve slowly in boiling water. Traditional herbal tea are made by boiling water for a long time, so the berberine is slowly extracted from the rhizome. You can use 2 to 8 grams per 1 liter of water per day. Usually start with 2 grams. If you do not like the bitter taste, it's better to decoct it with cinnamon, etc. and drink the extracted water twice a day. You can take it in three divided doses. In traditional medicine, it's been used for high fever, diarrhea, and vomiting. Among the side effects, the most common are gastrointestinal symptoms. For example, when taking 0.5 gram three times a day, about one third experience gastrointestinal symptoms such as temporary abdominal distension, abdominal pain, diarrhea, nausea, and constipation. So, it can be said to be a common side effect. In this case, if you reduce the amount, it will be much less. If you experience abdominal pain, stop taking it for 2-3 to three days, reduce it by half, and start again. If you develop an allergy, stop using it, and if it gets worse, be to the hospital. The same goes for temporary headaches. Since Bervarian has a blood sugar lowering effect, that is, a diabetes treatment effect, consult your doctor when taking diabetes medication. And if you are taking blood pressure medication or hyperlipidemia medications, consult your doctor. Uh, let's talk about precautions. Uh, one, please note that you must check your blood sugar and cholesterol level regularly. Two, people taking diabetes medication or hyperlipidemia drug 
need to adjust the dosage of their prescribed medications because the synergistic effect is great when taking berberine together. So you should consult your doctor. Third, when taking it for more than three months, it's recommended to take a break of about a month in between. Four, it should be avoided when pregnant or breastfeeding. Lastly, I'll tell you about other effects proven in controlled clinical studies. One, there are many papers reporting results showing similar effects to metformin and rosiglitazone, which are refrigerative prescription drugs used for diabetic patients. And in severe cases of diabetes, there are many clinical studies showing that the diabetes treatment effect is better when berberin is used in combination with diabetes prescription drugs. Two, it restores kidney function in case of kidney complication due to diabetes. Three, it has an anti-obesity effect, reducing weight, improving body mass index, and reducing waist circumference. Four, it reduces the amount of fat in the liver and improves liver function in the fatty liver. Five, it's been reported to have a significant reduction in blood uric acid levels in case of gout. Six, there are reports of improvement even in case of chronic and persistent diarrhea in children and adults. Seven, there is a report that it improves sex hormones level and index of metabolic complications in a female patient with polycystic ovarian syndrome. Eight, it reduced the recurrence rate of colorectal cancer. As you see, berberine is a very important medicinal component that's been reported to have a variety of effects. Wow, this is the end of today's part two lecture. In particular, in today's lecture, I mainly introduce plants that have very powerful effects among medicinal plants that improve hyperlipidemia. Next week, in part 3 of the lecture, I will also introduce four plants that have just as strong effect as the plant introduced so far. Everyone, stay healthy until the next lecture.